Welcome to Smart Notebook Math Tools. Today we're going to look at how to use the protractor and see what has been added to its functionality. If we click on the secondary toolbar for the measurement I tool icon, you will see the four measurement tools displayed, the ruler, the protractor, the geodriac, and the compass. And if we click on the second icon, we'll get the protractor onto the workspace. And as we hold a dark shaded area in the middle, we can move that protractor around in our workspace. Clicking on the small circle on the bottom, we can change its view to a 360 degree view. And re-clicking on that small circle, we can default back to the 180 degree view. If we trace along the edge with a marker pen, you will see a smooth arc appear as I draw along the outer edge. We can rotate the protractor by holding the outer circle of numbers. And as I rotate, you see the angle displayed in the center circle as our angle of rotation. And notice that it stays vertical so that we can read our angle measure quite easily. Clicking on the dark shaded region, we have up here an angle ejector arrow, little green arrow, as well as a green circle. And as we hold that green circle and rotate around, we see our angle measure displayed in the center circle change. And then as we click on the green arrow, we eject out that angle that's been measured. Holding the circle of numbers in the middle, we can pull the protractor in and out to resize. And finally, we have a pull down menu by clicking the downward arrow. We see that we have the features that other tools in Notebook have. So what has been changed from using the older version of Notebook to newer version? We could get a protractor from the gallery in the older version, but it was at least four touches away. We had to use two different protractors to measure in opposite directions. Resizing a protractor changed the pivot point, which could be very problematic. And using a pivot point was not how we would naturally interact with a protractor in the older version. In the newer version, we found how easy it is that in two touches, we could have a protractor onto the workspace. The one protractor could be used to measure for opposite directions. Resizing a protractor did not change the pivot point, which is a very good new feature to add. And it acts on a pivot point at the vertex. Now let's see how some of this functionality can be applied in an example. Given similar triangles, verify the equality of corresponding angles and the proportion of corresponding sides. So we could use our measurement tools, the ruler and the protractor to do this. Clicking on the measurement tool icon and then on the ruler and pulling with a dark shaded region in the middle of the ruler, we could move our ruler onto the workspace and measure our side lengths. Okay, at this time, I'm going to just work with the protractor. So deleting the ruler by clicking on it, I can either use the delete button from the toolbar or use the pull down menu. Now clicking on the measurement tool icon again and clicking on this, sorry, that is a little bit off. So clicking on the secondary toolbar again and clicking on our second icon for the protractor. Again, holding the dark shaded region, I can move my protractor and place it anywhere in the workspace. So at one of the vertices or at a vertex of one of the triangles. As I move my green circle around to the other side length in the triangle, I can measure my angle. And as I click on the ejector arrow, I see that I've measured the angle to be 122 degrees. Using another protractor, so clicking on my 
protractor, I can either go to the secondary toolbar or just clone this one. Okay, so there I have a second protractor to use and placing it on my other triangle and then clicking on the ejector arrow, moving my little green circle around with its arm to the other side length and then clicking on the ejector. Actually, I'm going to resize this protractor before I do that so that when I click on the ejector arrow, I can see that angle displayed as 122 degrees. So here I've got, I've measured two angles, two corresponding angles, and they are equal in size. Now I'm going to delete this protractor using the pull down menu and delete so that I have more room on my workspace and I can use that to measure the other angles. So moving my protractor to one of the other vertices. OK, now I can move my green butt air, um, green circle down to one of the side lengths. And I can move my white circle around so that I can measure that angle between two of the sides in a counterclockwise direction. So if I read now from the left side of the protractor, it looks like I've got about 21 degrees there. And as I eject this angle, I see that I've measured that angle to be 121 degrees, or sorry, 21 degrees. All right, to measure my third angle, let me move my protractor actually to the other triangle so that I can see how we can do this. Rotate around so that I can place the protractor onto the vertex at the pivot point and line those up. Rotate my protractor so I'm along one of the side lengths. Okay, still going to have to match up that pivot point to the vertex. There we go. A little bit more rotation. There we go. And now um, resizing the protractor so that as I um, measure. So moving the white circle around to one of the side lengths and moving the green circle around to the other side length, I can measure from in a counterclockwise direction as I move from the white circle to the green circle, ejecting that angle, I have measurement of 36 degrees. Okay, we can also look at other properties of the triangle. Um, such as placing the 36 degrees, 122 degrees, and the 21 degrees, and looking at the sum of the angles of the triangle, and we have it pretty close to 180 degrees. The accuracy is going to be similar to what the students will actually work with with real protractors, trying to get that accuracy. And for the smart board, this depends on trying to line up that vertex with the pivot point.